How is it going, Bears fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Bear Down Podcast, where we talk everything Bears every day of the week. The Chicago Bears finally did it. They ended their six-game losing streak by blowing out the Houston Texans by a score of 36-7 to at Soldier Field. We're going to be giving you guys in today's post-game show our instant reactions and analysis to the game. So let's hop right into it. I am your host, Chris Malpe. Today, joined by the right of me, uh, I am joined with both of my co-hosts, Parsh Shaw and Jalen McClinton. Guys, we finally won a football game. How are you feeling? Feels great. Um, you know, I did not expect the Bears to come out and blow the Texans out, but uh, it feels great to finally win a game after, you know, six straight losses. Um, yeah, that's about it. Feels good for me, too. All I said in our pregame, yeah, our pregame show with Zach that I, I didn't expect this to be a blowout because it's the Bears, but I was – uh, I was completely wrong. He won by 29 points, yeah, 36 to 7, 29 points. So definitely good to see the Bears put up 30 points in the first half. That, that was crazy to see, but only putting up second six points in the, in the second half, you know, doesn't really make me upset because no no matter how many points we put up in, in that second half, we were going to win the game regardless. But it was just good to see a very good offensive showing. Uh, from this offense, the offense has been very well since Mitchell had been mm-hmm. back in back uh, back in the starting lineup. And I, I can't be, can be more excited to see – Mitchell played well. Uh, David had a very good game. Uh, Allen Robinson did. All right, we're going to hop into the stats. (laughs) I wasn't done. (laughs) We're getting to the players that did well. But um, for the Houston Texans, uh, let's start off with them. Deshaun Watson, 21 for 30, 219 yards, one touchdown, zero interception. Sacked six times for losses of 52 yards combined. Uh, Had a 101.9 rating. A.J. McCarron came in for a play on a fourth and goal. Uh, Bears sacked him for a loss of 12. Taking a look at the Texans on the ground, Watson had seven carries for 38 yards. Um, excuse me. Uh, Buddy Howell, uh, 11 carries for 42 yards. Duke Johnson, eight for 26. Receiving Chris uh, Craig Hansen, I believe, was their leader. I think that's his name. Uh, seven mm-hmm. receptions for 36 yards. Kiki QT also did add a fumble, but also three receptions for 24 yards and the lone score on the game. For the Texans, and for the Texans defensively, the only really thing to worry about is safety Eric Murray with 11 tackles, two sacks, two tackles for a loss. Um, Zach Cunningham also with eight tackles, a pass defended, and a tackle for a loss. Taking a look at the Bears, Mitchell Trubisky, uh, a great day. Proved why he was the number two overall pick, at least in this game uh, specifically. 24 for 33, 267 passing yards, three touchdowns, zero turnovers. Only sacked three times. Pocket presence wasn't the greatest throughout the game, uh, but uh, still a good showing from him with a passer rating of 126.7. On the ground, David Montgomery had his second 100-yard game in three appearances. I wanted him to hit 200 yards. I wanted them to keep running the ball in the second half, but only 11 carries for him, 113 yards, 10.3 yards per carry, an 80-yard touchdown for him. Cordell Patterson added six for 26. Mitch with four for 23. Great day for Bears receivers. Allen Robinson, nine receptions, 123 yards, 13.7 yards per catch, and a touchdown with a long of 35. Montgomery adding three for 42, 14 yards per catch. Cole Komet, four catches for 41 yards, a long catch of 16 and 10.3 yards per catch. Jimmy Graham, four catches, 23 yards, and a score. Darnell Mooney, two catches, 22 yards, and a touchdown as well. Taking a look at the Bears' defense, Roquan Smith, 12 total tackles, two sacks, two tackles for a loss, and three quarterback hits. Danny Trevathan also adding 10 tackles. Taking a look further down, Mario Edwards Jr., two uh, sacks. Uh, He had two very big sacks on fourth down in this game. Also, Khalil Mack, only two tackles total, but one of them being a sack, a safety on the Sean Watson, and also a forced fumble. So, Parth and Jalen, We saw the Bears take over in this one. We all said we didn't see it coming, but the Texans were down a lot of players. Also lost safety Justin Reed in the middle of the game. Uh, So, Parth, I'm going to start it off here with you. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know it looks like for that last playoff spot as of right now that the Arizona Cardinals are going to take it, but it does put the Bears, uh, I believe, a game or a game and a half behind in the playoff race. So what are your reactions to this one, and did you see this coming at all? I honestly did not. You know, the way the Bears came out on offense, again, it was fluid. Uh, they were able to get the run game going real fast. You know, the first play of the game, you saw David Montgomery 
basically the run part two, you know, the 80 yard run. By the way, I'm sorry to cut you off. Uh, just reported that uh, Jalen Johnson's sol- shoulder injury is significant. So oh, okay. keep going. Sorry, that kind of worsens the mood of the podcast. Yeah, that definitely does. But, you know, the, the game itself was fun to watch. You know, the offense came out firing. You know, Trubisky looked well. You know, the passes were fast, short, quick. Um, I think something he's good at. And the Bears excelled at it all game. You know, we were able to get the offense going most of the time. Um, I think the run game, like I said, was strong. Allen Robinson was phenomenal. Uh, he eclipsed 1,000 yards on the season. Uh, it's insane. Uh, he's having an insane year so far. Darnell Mooney also got a touchdown. Uh, he's playing really well. And then uh, Cole Komet, uh, a couple impressive catches. I think he, he he's starting to get his way into the offense a lot more. He's producing. He's breaking tackles. Uh, you know, he, he's, 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 he's big. Uh, he reminds me a little bit of Gronk. I think he has a really high ceiling, and I think we'll, we'll see him evolve into a better tight end next year as – you know, he gets more of the tight end one action, I guess, from the beginning of the season. And Jimmy Graham, again, another red t- touchdown catch for him, five touchdowns on the year. Kind of go around the end zone, it's automatic. Yeah, it, it's automatic. Uh, I mean, he, that was a beautiful throw by Trubisky, too. Uh, he's looked, he, he again, Jimmy Graham got a lot of criticism for the signing here, but he's produced so far, you know, five touchdowns, cannot complain. And Allen Robinson, I'm going to say it again, extend him. He, uh, he, he's playing outstanding, lights out. Him and Trubisky had a fun time out there today, it definitely looked like. Yeah, uh, it, it was a good game. Robinson, you saw him on the sideline celebrating with Trubisky. Uh, I don't know if you can essentially make a determination on, on whether or not what happens to Matt Nagy based off this game, same thing for Brian Pace. Uh, yeah. The Texans are clearly a horrible team. Uh, but it was nice to see the Bears take over. It was nice to see him do it. The defense came to play. Mario Edwards, a great game. Bilal Nichols also added a sack. Khalil Mack had a great game. Uh, we saw Duke Shelley in at nickel cornerback, and uh, you know he didn't blow any big coverages, so I think he probably should get the starting spot for the rest of the season. Uh, but Jalen, uh, what were your thoughts on this one? Uh, like I said, it was a um, oh my god, it was a very good game to watch. Uh, amazing feeling. Um, ever since I guess since mm. the Bears touched the field and the ADR run by David Montgomery, which just got me really excited for this game. Uh, that Texas defense is terrible. But uh, just in general, their Bears offense over those last couple weeks, ever since we put Mitchell back in, uh, back when we played the Packers, this offense uh, put up a decent amount of points. Twenty, uh, we put up over twenty-five points each time we played, or at least twenty-five when we, when we played the when we played the Packers. So uh, this offense looks way different with, with Mitchell Trubisky as a starter. Um, like I said, I don't think we should have benched Mitchell. In, in the first place, who knows? We we might be still sitting at six and seven, or we might have a couple more wins, or maybe even have, like I said, the same amount of losses. But uh, it, this this offense just looks fluid. Um, the offensive line has played well. They gave up three sacks, but uh, Sam Musterfer he's done a very good job playing center, moving Cody uh, to guard, replacing James Daniels' spot, and uh, as well as Alex Barnes. He he did have a couple false starts, but uh, he, he's his play has been very uh, good. Defense. Um, Started off a little bit slow, but it, it's it picked up uh, as, as the game continued to progress. We had a turnover, uh, Khalil Mack turnover. We had like six sacks. Mario Edwards played well. Khalil Mack played well. Um, Akeem Hicks just just wrecked havoc. And Bilal Bilal Nichols keeps coming into his own as he gets more experience. Yeah, Bilal crazy. Nichols was in the backfield. He's definitely going to be um, somebody we need to look to to keeping um, after his uh, contract is up. Uh, this is his third year, so definitely something we need to probably look into this offseason. So it was, just, it was just a very good game. Uh, special teams had a turnover as well. Cairo Santos continues to uh, pry away that, that starting kicker role from, from Eddie Pin- Pinheiro. So it was just a good game uh, all around. You know, the play calling was, was, was good um, in, the, in the first half when it really mattered. In the second half, we were just being creative, I guess, with, with end arounds and plays to, to Cordell Patterson. Yeah, uh, it was a really good game, you know, uh, and and I mentioned it, you know, some role players on defense stepping up, Bilal Nichols, Duke Shelley amongst some of them that made big plays uh, in this one or stepped up when they needed to when they were kind of getting picked on. uh, Runs up the middle a decent bit in the first half for the Texans as well as they threw at Shelley a decent bit. Uh, I'm not sure if he had any passes defended, but obviously we bust our screen. I said it on Twitter earlier, week in, week out, we see him uh, give up a big play and we didn't see Shelly do that. So I am happy in that regard. Let's head to our game MVPs, uh, offensive and defensive player of the game. Uh, I'm going to go first for offensive. I mean, I think it's got to be Mitchell Trubisky. Uh, you know, he's been someone who in the past has definitely cracked under pressure. Uh, and, and 
this game, we knew coming in that there were going to be the comparisons with him and Deshaun Watson. Uh, and we saw that three seconds into the telecast. Uh, I, I tweeted it out uh, right when they were previewing the game. Uh, the Bears are looking to beat the quarterback that uh, they made a mistake for trading up for. And obviously, we but we all know that's still true. But it was nice and bittersweet. I said it earlier this week to see Trubisky uh, be able to perform uh, against Watson well. And I feel so bad for Watson being down there. But a great day for Trubisky, 267 passing yards, three touchdowns, passer rating of 126. He didn't try to force anything. I think there was only maybe one bad throw I, th- I saw throughout the entire game. He was taking what was there for him. And the Texans sure gave him a lot. So Trubisky did what he needed to do and got it done. So I'm proud that he was able to do that. Jalen, uh, you can give it to other people too. I mean, Montgomery, Dave Montgomery had a great game from the jump. Allen Robinson also had a good game. I'm just saying to switch it up for the podcast. But I know you're going to agree with me. Uh, so I'm going to pass it off to you now. Who's your offensive MVP in this one? I'm going to give it to Mitchell. I don't Even if David Montgomery or even Allen Robinson had over 200 yards receiver in the rush, I was going to give it to Mitchell regardless. Um uh, like it was, I know this is like kind of off topic, but like it, it's a meme that it was like um, when when they showed the graphic, Mitchell was in that uh, Jordan meme was like, was like I took it personally, and I, I definitely feel like that that meme is, is something close to true. Like he's been ridiculed uh, these last four seasons, even when we were in the playoffs, and Patrick Mahomes was an EVP and Deshaun Watson was was leading his team to a playoff run that that we uh, made the wrong choice. Now, I, obviously, that's kind of true. I'm, I'm going to still agree with that. I would rather have Deshaun Watson right now or Mitchell Trubisky. And that sucks to say, but it, it's definitely true. So um, I just felt like he, he took it personally. He wanted to, you know, kind of prove that, you know, Matt Nagy, not Matt Nagy, Ryan Pace did not make the wrong move by drafting him over over uh, Deshaun Watson or, or Patrick Mahomes. But this is, I'm, I'm going to give it to Mitchell. You know, he's, he's had a very up and down season. And, uh, you know, ever since he became, he's became, he's became starter again, he, he's played very well. I mean, yeah, you remember when uh, Mahomes came to town last year and I was at that game, as was Parth, uh, and he counted on his fingers to 10, uh, I believe, uh, Mm -hmm. how many picks it took to get him, uh, which wasn't the greatest. But, uh, you know, it it, it is truly a bittersweet moment for Trubisky that could easily, I mean, we don't don't know what happens. We don't know how the rest of the season will play out, but – this easily could be the end of the Nagy Trubisky pace era after this season. So uh, it was nice to get a win against Watson, uh, and, and Trubisky definitely stepped up in this one. So, Farth, I think you're going to be in agreement with us here, but who is your offensive player of the game? Yeah, I'm just going to agree with you guys. You know, I think Trubisky balled out. You know, I think going into this game, the storyline was Deshaun Watson's going to absolutely, you know, get his revenge game against the Bears and throw for 400 yards and three touchdowns and make Trubisky look bad. But it was the complete opposite. You know, Trubisky, um, you know, he, he played well right from the beginning of the game. Uh, he didn't re- re- necessarily risk it on the field as much. Uh, it was a dink and dunk game, but I think he played well. He did what he had to do and got the game, got the win and got the three touchdowns. All right, yeah, uh, a nice one for Trubisky today, and we all commend that. Let's move to defensive player of the game. I'll go first once again. Uh, I have to give it to Khalil Mack for a simple reason. He didn't make a ton of plays in this game, but he made plays when it mattered the most early in the game that gave the Bears a ton of momentum and slowed down the Texans, which ended up halting them throughout the game. Uh, the fumble in the first quarter was – didn't look like a big play, but the Texans continued to have offensive struggles after that. Weren't as reliant on the run, even though the Bears didn't turn into the points. And then the safety on the drive after that, uh, when the Bears punted it away, the Texans, it was back-to-back sacks. Bilal Nichols on the first one on an incredible blitz, uh, and then also Mack on the second one. I like what Chuck Pagano draws up blitz as it shows you what they were able to do. Uh, Robert Quinn still not making plays and was honestly getting bullied in some parts of this game, and that's unfortunate. But Khalil Mack made plays when it showed up, uh, got it to a two-possession game from the Bears, and they never looked back. Uh, it really shows you what happens when the offense and the defense is clicking at the same time, but that's obviously such a rarity in the NFL, especially for the Bears. Uh, so it was nice to see both of them clicking, and Khalil Mack was a huge piece of that defense that stepped up today and made some huge plays. So, Jalen, I'm going to pass it back around to you right now. You could pick other players too. Duke Shelley for having a good game. Roquan Smith had a big game. We saw Mario Edwards have two sacks. Bilal Nichols was great as well. But who's your def- who's your defensive uh, MVP going to be in this one? I'm going to give it to Roquan. Roquan had 12 tackles, two sacks. Um He's just having an amazing season. Um, I wouldn't Get say him by the Pro Bowl, man. 
Get him no, don't get him in the Pro Bowl. Get him as an All Pro. I mean, a Pro Bowl as well, but I'd rather him have an All Pro and there's nothing than a Pro Bowl. But uh, he's he's definitely been one of our best defensive players. He's definitely up there with Khalil Mack, maybe even having a better season uh, than Khalil Mack right now. But Roquan continues to fly all across the field. Uh, very fast linebacker. He's sideline to sideline, um, and he's definitely making a name for himself as another Bears great linebacker. And uh, I couldn't be you know more excited to continue to see him play. Yeah, and I know before the Detroit game, him and Mac combined had 23 tackles for a loss. I'm sure that number is up above, if not right around 30 now. So a great season for both of them. And as you mentioned, Khalil Mack, you know, it's been a, a down season for him. I believe he had two sacks today, which will get him to nine and a half. Uh, just above Leonard Floyd's number with nine. But, uh, you know, Khalil Mack's always a player that's going to make the Pro Bowl off his name. And hopefully he can get all pro honors because he still had a good season, even though uh, he isn't essentially doing things that stuff up the stat sheet. So, Parth, uh, are we in agreement here once again, uh, you and I at least? Uh, who are you going to go with here for your defensive player of the game? I'm going to give it to Mario Edwards. Uh, you know, he had two sacks. I think it was both in the fourth quarter, but, you know, I think our third crucial quarter. plays. Yeah, both crucial plays. Um, you know, just coming in when his name's called, you know, that's what we like to see. Uh, you know, um, Playing better than Robert Quinn, at least uh, when I, he comes on the field, it makes a difference. Uh, that's that's what we want out of role players, and uh, that's something good. That the that's something that's the bear. The Bears have done a really good job with finding good role players on the defensive line, and that's something that the, I think we're really good at producing as well. Yeah, and kudos to Jay Rogers. I don't know how he hasn't gotten hired for a defensive coordinator job ever. No we'll see what happens this offseason. But he's done an impeccable job ever since the Bears hired him back a couple of years ago. Uh, he has been magnificent. And he's someone I never want to leave Chicago because even though Robert Quinn isn't working out, the rest of that defensive line looks great. Brent Urban uh, as well. We, I talked about it earlier. Nichols is getting going. And if we yeah. see Akeem Hicks get dropped or traded next year because of his contract, uh, I trust Paul Nichols a lot more now. I really think he's picked up his play with Eddie Goldman coming back. Uh, Jay Rogers has done a great job. And as you mentioned it, I mean, Mario Edwards has been a great role player stepping in for Ray Robertson Harris. He's done an incredible yeah. job. So before we close this one out, we are quickly – going to be talking about uh, a couple of ways we think the Bears can improve uh, for the next game. Obviously, a huge one at Minnesota. Obviously, uh, the Bears really don't control their own fate the rest of the season. Uh, the Arizona Cardinals more so do. But if the Bears can beat the Vikings uh, and win out, which they would need to do, uh, they would definitely be in a good spot uh, to be able to make the playoffs if the Cardinals can lose. And it also depends on that Week 17 game against Green Bay, whether or not they're playing for a seed. But let's talk a little bit about what needs to improve heading into the Minnesota game. I'll start off. Um, I think it's interesting that Trubisky's back against the Vikings, and we've seen the offense clicking uh, three weeks in a row. I also think that partially attributes to Bill Lazor's play calling. He's heavy RPO. He's heavy play action, and we saw that a ton today. I'm not essentially going to say it needs to improve, but uh, you know you have to keep getting Mitch outside the pocket. Whether it's him scrambling, whether it's him throwing on the run, we know he's the most dangerous when he's outside the pocket, and we've been saying it for months and months and months. So continue to get Mitch outside of the pocket. And then, uh, you know what, one more thing I'll add in there, get David Montgomery the ball more. Uh, Minnesota's had a little bit of a tough time on D. They struggled today against LaShawn McCoy and Ronald Jones for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, we didn't see the Bears get anything going offensively against the Vikings last time. And if the Bears want to get something going this time, they can't become one-dimensional. They have to keep the run game involved. Uh, and, and they have to get Mitch outside the pocket running the ball as well. Uh, so those are my two little tidbits on offense, and I hope the defense will come to play. They did a pretty good job against Minnesota last time, holding them to only 19. Kirk Cousins, I will say, has been playing better in 2020, so kudos to him. Uh, but, Parth, I'm going to pass it back around to you now. Uh, any improvements you, you want to share or add uh, that you think the Bears need to work on uh, heading into week 15 uh, at Minnesota? I think, um, you know, the offensive, we just have to be more consistent. Um, I think we just got to run the ball more. I think next week against the Minnesota, that's probably going to be something that's going to happen a lot more. We're going to rely on that running game more. You know, David Montgomery's a, a beast. Uh, I think he's gotten, he's getting better here as we go into this late stretch of the season. I think uh, he definitely deserves to get 20 carries a game from now on, and I think it starts next week against Minnesota. I think they're a much better team defensively. Um, they've they've definitely gotten better o over the season as their rookies improve. And uh, defensively, I think uh, we just got to watch out for you know Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen. Those guys are especially absolutely especially especially if Jalen Johnson is out because yeah we'll probably keep uh, Shelley in the slot I would assume and put, put no you know, see this yeah. is what we need rookie versus rookie caliber right now. 
Yeah, yeah, Kevin Teller would be nice to have. Hey, him. Bill Norris has done good against mm-hmm. the, the, he did really good against Higgins last year, and that's obviously a conversation for next week. That's in college. All right, we're talking about Adam Thielen, who's an all pro type receiver. I'll talk about Justin receiver, Herbert, yeah. I assume Thielen and, uh, would be on. Hey, at least they can't line up Thielen in the slot across from screen like they did two times last game uh, when he scored on us twice. But we're getting yeah. a little off topic. Uh, Jalen, before we close this episode off, uh, anything you ne- think uh, the Bears need to improve on moving forward? I'm basically agreeing with what you guys say. Uh, still try to find some type of consistency with the offense. Just run the ball more. David David had an 80 yard touchdown and only got 10 more carries after that. That's that's. And that was the first. I was confident game. after the 80 yard score that he was going to break 200 yards for the first time in his career. Uh, no, I, I knew it. I knew that wasn't going to happen because of who our head coach and who our offensive coordinator is. He wasn't going to break 200, but I knew he was going to break 100 at least. I knew that for a fact, but. Uh, just give David the ball. Like I don't know why we continue to sh- sh- stray away from the run game. I don't understand that. I don't understand why Cordero Patterson stick almost gets the same amount of carries as David Montgomery does. And Patterson, David- I will say, I think Patterson's been better since Bill Lazor became the play caller. I think they use it more creatively. They get him to the outside more. Uh, and I, I, th- I just personally think he's been a little better. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like I said, just get the ball to David. Defensively, I can't really say what I like what to do better because we had a good defensive game, but that was against the Texans with no offensive line and no weapons for Deshaun Watson. So I'm gonna just say try to be able to stop the run um, and don't play prevent defense. Even though we really didn't do it this week, don't play prevent defense next week. Yeah. Well, that'll pretty much do it for our Week 14 post-game show. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you want more content from us, do us a favor. Head over to our website, BearDown.com. We're posting columns, articles, and blogs starting tomorrow to get you guys ready for the Bears' Week 15 matchup with the Minnesota Vikings. Should be a very interesting one as one of those teams will uh, take over uh, as a spot behind the wild card, uh, Arizona Cardinals. Uh, you know, heading into week 16. And it, it, it's, it's, it's a game that holds a lot, if especially if the Cardinals lose. So be sure to check out our website for the week 15 coverage. If you want to find us on social media, we're at Bear Down on Instagram and Twitter, announcing a Christmas giveaway very soon. We want to give back to you guys, and we're going to do that. Uh, so be sure to look out for that. And finally, you can find the links to all of our social media pages down in the description. We're very active on all of them, Instagram and Twitter, and it's a great way to interact with us. Parshaw, Jalen McClinton, the Bears hadn't won a game for a month and a half, uh, but feels good to finally win today. Have a good feeling uh, heading into finals week, I know, for you and me, Parth. Uh, any last words, guys? Uh, yeah, that felt good to finally pick up a win, like you said. Hopefully we can keep the momentum going. You know, the offense is looking a lot better. I think, uh, you know, we're scoring back-to-back games with 30-plus points. Did not think that would have happened this year, especially after that six-game losing streak. But, you know, it's exciting to see the team win again. I think the team it – felt, it felt good to see the guys just smiling and happy on the sidelines. I think it, it the culture changed for a week. Especially Allen Robinson. It was yeah. Really happy. But, Jalen, any last words before we close this one out? Uh, it's, it's a good Sunday for me. You know, we got obviously the Bears got a win, and then the Bulls play at seven o'clock. Even though it's preseason, it's just happy to see the Bulls and Bears play on the same day. That usually does not happen uh, due to the schedules not uh, matching up. But uh, hey, that, that's about it. Bear down. Finally, we finally got a win. Yeah, finally got a win. I was hoping the Bears would hang a fifty piece on the Texans, but it didn't. Oh, no, Forty at least. Yeah, uh, but uh, you know, it was a good game. Uh, it, it's a, it'll be a. Uh, Feel good Monday tomorrow, and that's what we love to see. We're going to keep double uploading for you guys on YouTube uh, on days where we don't get too busy. The next two days might be a little tough because Barth and I do have finals, but we're still going to try and get out at least one video a day, so be sure to look out for that. Uh, And also, if you're on YouTube um, or if you're on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, uh, be sure to subscribe. We're still putting out five podcasts a week, but be sure to go check out our YouTube channel. Guys, it's been a pleasure to be your host once again. My name is Chris Maltby. Bears win! Week 14 over the Houston Texans and Deshaun Watson, 36 to 17. Once again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. And Bears fans, as always, do us a favor and stay safe and bear down. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace.